All right, today we're going to have something special. We're going to be beginning a story that has a lesson at the end of it. And the story's name is Jaluk and the Voyage of the Fat Belly. But let's begin our time by asking the Lord to bless it. Shall we pray? Our Father, we pray today that you would use this story and the lesson to follow to work in our hearts to make us willing to do whatever you would have us to do. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 1. Jean-Luc finds a job. Two hundred years ago, in a faraway place across the ocean in a country called France, there lived a boy whose name was Jaluc. Can you say Jaluc? Jean That's not a normal name around here. But Jaluc was just an average boy. Why, he wouldn't have won a push-up contest, and he wasn't overly handsome, but he wasn't overly ugly either. He was just, well, how can I say it? He was just a normal boy who lived on the coast of northwestern France. But what made him very special was that Jean-Luc came from a special family. His family were all Christians, and that's a wonderful thing to have. I imagine some of you come from a family that your mom and dad are both Christians, and they take you to church every Sunday. And you know, that's how it was for Jean-Luc. Jean-Luc could not remember a time when he didn't attend a church service. He was always there. His parents made sure that he was always being taught the Bible, whether it was at home or in Sunday school or in the church services. Just a few years earlier, Jean-Luc had been in a church service when he heard his pastor speaking about something very special. His pastor was telling the congregation how that Jesus had died for their sins. He told them about the love of God for sinners. And Jean-Luc listened very intently that day. He heard how Jesus had died for him. And he realized for the first time that he was lost and on his way to hell without Jesus. And that made him think a whole lot. Emotions went through his heart as he was thinking about this. After the service, Jean-Luc spoke with his father about the matter. What should I do, Father? I know that I'm a sinner. But could God love someone as bad as me? You see, Jean-Luc had done some bad things, and he didn't know if God could still love him. And maybe some of you think that way today. Why, God can never love me. I'm too bad of a person. I do bad things. Well, Jean-Luc's father knew the Lord, and he opened his Bible to Romans 5, 8, and he read this verse. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. At that moment, tears streamed down Jean-Luc's face as he realized that God did love him. And that afternoon, Jean-Luc knelt down on the floor and spoke to God and said these words, O oh God, I am a sinful boy. I believe that I've done many things wrong, but you say in the Bible that you love sinners. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and rose again. Please forgive me for all that I have done. Amen. Now, several years later, Jean-Luc remembered the joy of that day. And perhaps some of you remember when you received Jesus as your Savior. And that was such a good feeling for him. He had been born again as a child of God. And from that day on, Jean-Luc wondered, what will God have for me to do? He wondered, maybe I'll be a pastor just like my pastor. Or maybe I'll be, yeah, I'll be a missionary maybe. Or maybe he would be something else. He just didn't know, but he wondered, someday God will show me what I want to do. And whatever it was, Jean-Luc wanted to be ready to do it. Then one day, Jean-Luc's father sat Jean-Luc down, and he spoke to him very seriously. Son, you are now old enough to get a job, and I want you to go out tomorrow morning, ask around the village, and see if there is anyone who needs a helper to work for them. 
How excited Jean-Luc was. This was the first time he had ever had a job. He thought, what will I get to do? Will I get to work for a butcher and cut up meat and put it in packages? Oh, that would be so much fun. Or would he be a cobbler's helper, repairing shoes or making shoes? Why, maybe he would make Air Jordans. Wow, he couldn't believe it. It would be so exciting. Or he thought, maybe I'll be something like a chimney sweep. Or I'll get to climb down inside big chimneys and sweep out all of the soot. Oh, that would be fun. I'd get all dirty. Oh, he just couldn't wait for the next day. Well, you can imagine what happened. He didn't sleep very well that night. And then the next morning, he was up at 5 o'clock in the morning. He's going to be tired later on, I think. Five o'clock, he woke up, he ate his breakfast, he read his Bible, he prayed, and he was all ready to run out the door at six o'clock, and his parents said, why don't you sit down? And they all sat down on the couch, and mom and dad said, Jean-Luc, we would like to pray with you so that God would show you the right job for you to have. And so they bowed their heads and asked the Lord to do just that. Well, Jean-Luc was so excited, he knew that the Lord had something special for him. And so he went out into the village. He knocked on the door of the butcher. The butcher was already there at 7 o'clock in the morning, and he went inside, and, oh, Jean-Luc looked around. There were already three helpers there. Two of them were the butcher's sons, and another one was a man named Raoul, and Raoul was already helping him. And if he already had three helpers, why why would he need someone like Jean-Luc? Well, the butcher agreed with what Jean-Luc had thought. The butcher said, I'm sorry, Jean-Luc, I know you would be a very hard worker, but I'm afraid that I cannot use you as a worker this year. Try again next time. Well, Jean-Luc shook his head and walked out the door, and he thought, where can I go now? He looked down the street, and there was a sign that was shaped like a shoe. I know, I'll go to the shoe cobbler. And so he walked down the street. I know I can work for him. He knows who I am. He likes me. And he looked in the window and he noticed that the shoe cobbler was just sitting in his chair going like this, rubbing his hands together and it looked like he didn't have very much to do. But Jean-Luc was still excited. He had prayed that God would show him just the right thing to do. So he knocked on the door and walked inside and there was the, the owner of the shop sitting there wringing his hands and Jean-Luc said, "Uh, Mr. Cobbler, I'm wondering if maybe you need some help. And Mr. Cobbler just shook his head and he said, I'm sorry, Jean-Luc, but I have made a lot of shoes and no one needs any new one now, so I'm afraid that I won't need any help today. Maybe you can come back in three months and then ask me again. Oh, Jean-Luc was not very happy about that, and so he walked down the street thinking, I can't work for the butcher. I can't work for the cobbler. Who can I work for? Oh. And he saw up there. Do you see him right there? On top of that roof over there was a man standing on top with a big, long brush. It was the chimney sweep. Oh, boy. Jean-Luc ran as fast as he could down to the building, climbed up the side of it on top of the roof. Don't you do this at home, boys and girls. And went up there and got up to the chimney, and there was the chimney sweep. He was just about to go inside, and he was already covered with black soot. You see, he had already been working for several hours and was very dirty. Jean-Luc said, Mr. Chimney Sweep, <laughs> oh, oh, Mr. Chimney, oh, 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 Mr. Chimney, oh, 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 he couldn't talk to him because the soot kept getting in his nose, and he would, oh, 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 oh. <clears throat> you know what I mean, right? Jean-Luc said, this is not the job for me. And he slid down the roof all the way down to the street. Oh, boy, what am I going to do, Jean-Luc thought. Well, as he walked around, he couldn't find anyone else, and so he thought, what will I do? What am I thinking? I think I will talk to God and ask him to help me. And that's the best thing to do when you don't know what to do. Jean-Luc bowed his head, and he said this to the Lord. God, this morning mom and dad and I all prayed and asked you to help me find the right job. And I'm kind of discouraged right now. Please encourage me. 
and help me to find just the right job. In Jesus' name, amen. And then he raised his head and he thought, I know where I haven't gone yet. I'll walk down the street to the shipyard. You see, the shipyard is where there's a big, long pier where all the boats are docked next to it, and he thought, maybe I'll be able to help a fisherman. So he walked down the road, and when he finally got there, he saw the big fishing boats. And there the fishermen were in there mending their nets or getting their nets emptied. All the fish would come out and fall onto the pier, and it was a very neat thing to watch. But what had Jean-Luc's attention were two large sailing ships. He walked closer and closer, wondering, look at these ships. They are so big, so large. The masts are so tall. I wonder if I could get a closer look. And he walked closer and closer, and he finally got up to the next one, and he noticed there was the name written on the side, and he began to chuckle. I can't believe they named it that. Do you know what the name of it was? It was the Gros Ventra which means in English, fat belly. It must have been a very big ship, huh? Well, as Jean-Luc was looking, he suddenly felt like there was somebody standing near him, and he turned around, and there was a tall, distinguished man looking at him. Why, that would be unnerving, wouldn't it? He said, uh, oh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And the distinguished, tall man said, Young man, may I help you? Jean-Luc thought, maybe this is the opportunity the Lord has saved just for me. And so he stood up nice and tall, and he said, Sir, my father has sent me to look for a job, and I am wondering if you know anyone who could use a hard worker like me. The man looked at him, and he said, Oh, you are a hard worker, are you? Hmm. You see, my name is Captain Kergelo, and I am the captain of the Fat Belly, and I am looking for a cabin boy to work for me on our next trip. We are going to look for the mysterious land of El Dorado. Wow! Jean-Luc was going to try to be the cabin boy on this ship that was going to look for a mysterious land? Jean-Luc stood very tall, and he said, Sir... I would love to do that, but I must ask my father first. Whee! And he was gone. He ran as fast as he could over to see his mom and dad and ask for permission to go on the voyage of the fat belly. And I wonder, will he get to go? Will his parents say yes? You'll have to come back next time to find out. <laughs>